This is Scott with Level Up Tuts, and today we're going to be learning more about Breakpoint using Breakpoint and Singularity to put together our grid system. Now this is something you can do, choose to do on a per layout basis or on a project basis. Now you could, uh, when we create layouts, you could write all of the layout grid CSS in your layout CSS file, or you can write it in here. It really just depends on how much you plan on extending your code, or maybe this is a one-off thing. Basically, like I've said many, many times already, uh, Omega gives you a lot of options to structure your code how you want. So I'm gonna get rid of this stuff where we're changing the background color and all sorts of you know crazy stuff. Um, just get back down to our basics. So in uh, the first couple of videos, on singularity or the first video we made these regions and this one spanned it spanned three columns and it started at position number 10 and then uh, the main content spanned nine columns and started at position number one thus creating the uh, website that's totally broken here okay the website that's working correctly right here so we have this and this this is our our nine columns and this is our our uh, three columns now it's important to state that if we were to assign something inside of this section here to a column, it's going to be uh, sort of restarting, right? So let's come back here and inside of our region content, I wanna put uh, the field name body and in here I wanna assign this to, let's say if you were thinking, I want this to take up half the space, right? or maybe let's say taking up a little bit more than half the space. So we would say, all right, it's going to be five and it's starting at the first space. So you might think if you're using other grid systems that there is a universal grid, right? Well, this is not sort of the case. This sort of starts over essentially. This grid span is according to the width of its parent. And you saw that in here where the the uh, sidebar and the main content area are determining its grid size by the width of its parent. Likewise, even though we said this to be five uh, columns wide, it's not five of the total columns, which would put it somewhere around here. It's actually five of 12 columns inside of this content area. So that's just one thing to be thinking about when you're adding your things to your grid. Um, in this case, if we wanted to take up half of the space or more than half of the space, let's say if we wanted to take up half the space, we would use six, six is half of 12, and come back and now it's taking up half the space. Of course, if we wanted to say almost uh, almost all of the space, we could say 10, and now it's almost all of the space here. Of course, I'm not going to do that here, but I am just wanted to give that a heads up if you were using Singularity and notice that. Now, I wanna talk about building a responsive grid. So, uh, right now, let's uh, define some page widths, and we're going to define them at certain breakpoints. So, if you recall our page width on mobile should be nothing, right? It should be just fitting to the width of the parent. So we're not going to assign any sort of width for page. Uh, what we can do, however, is assign it a width at certain breakpoints. So if we want to say that the page is going to be a width of uh, you know, whatever our breakpoints are, we could actually do that right in here and we could say include and we could say breakpoint tab. So we want the tablet width and we want that to have a width of tab because this variable, as we remember, was 44M. So it's using the variable as a breakpoint and then it's also assigning the width of the content area here, but only at tablet. So of course, because we're doing this mobile first, you'll notice that the width is going to be set to our 44Ms. Once we get down past 44Ms, there we go, and now it's fully fitting to the parent. Now, uh, likewise, we want to do the same with desktop. We could also say include breakpoint desk with desk. 
And now we have our breakpoints giving the total width of our page a change and you'll see that the columns are automatically adjusting to fill the parent like they were before, but now it's just doing at the specific breakpoints. Cool. Well, that's really nice and easy, uh, but now we have this sidebar here, right? And actually, I'm gonna do something really quick. I'm gonna turn off these helper areas because right now they might be getting in the way, right? I mean, we sort of see them here, but uh, I think they might be getting in the way. So if we go to appearance and then find our theme settings, and then we can now say uh, under development, region demo mode, get that off. I usually turn that off pretty much right away. Once you sort of understand the, the layouts, um, you don't really need to see the, the region mode too much. Okay, so you can see this looks a little bit cleaner. Okay, so now we should have things a little bit uh, better. But if you remember, we have this powered by Drupal here. Um, if we were to inspect this page, we'd be seeing that that's actually like the footer and we have some clear fix issues going on, specifically because we're moving elements out of the document flow. So the footer content is floating right up here. Uh, well, you may be thinking, well, we could throw a clear fix on the wrapper and that's all good. Well, what's nice about uh, the singularity framework is that it actually comes with a clear fix mix in. And for me, I think it's a little bit nicer to throw it into my uh, CSS than having to add a clear fix class whenever I want to use it. So we can say in our uh, CSS here, I'm going to put this right above here. And this is going to be for our main, our L dot main, which is a wrapper. We could say at include clear fix, save this. And now uh, you'll notice that this powered by Drupal is now coming down where it's supposed to be. If we were to inspect, we'd be seeing that the normal page layout is what we'd be expecting. So we sort of have it going here, but typically you'd want to build mobile first, right? And we totally didn't do that. We said, all right, this grid is 310 and this grid is 91. Um, but we wouldn't necessarily want to do that in the real world. We would probably want to wrap all of this in a breakpoint, right? So we could say at tablet is when we want to start showing uh, this column like that. So just in one line of code here, I'm wrapping this in at breakpoint. And this is going to now be totally responsive. So we have our desktop, we have our tablet, which is just a narrower version. And then once it hits to be uh, mobile, you'll see it's all in one big column. Um, and you can see it's put this navigation down below it. Now you might be wondering, well, how do I get this navigation in the search above here? Well, that's going to be getting into modifying our template files, right? So right now in our template files, it's being output that the main content area is above the sidebar. But as you can see in no time here, we've gone from having just a grid site to a grid that not only responds, but uh, completely changes. Now you can even do more crazy things, right? What happens if you wanted to completely change the grid uh, at a different breakpoint? Well, you could do that. So if we said, all oh, right, now at desktop, we want the region sidebar to, again, we want it to be uh, starting at the first position and we want this one to be starting at the fourth position. And now let's come back to the page. And so now this is going to be getting crazy. Oh, and I forgot I need to make this a desk, not desktop. All right, now you'll notice that they've completely changed sizes, sides. And we could say, all right, there we go. And so you can see this grid is totally flexible. At our desktop, we can really do whatever we want and we don't have to worry about changing the HTML to change the grid and change our content on the grid. This makes this more flexible than most grid frameworks I've ever worked with. Cool. Well, in the next video, I'm going to show you no query and we're going to get that set up so that we can have our no query CSS working exactly like how we want it to support older browsers. So as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tuts. If you have any questions or comments, leave a comment in the video or hit us up at Twitter at Level Up Tuts.
Of course, we're going to be going way more over this once we start building out layouts, right? Because our layouts are going to be sort of like defined layouts that we can move from site to site. So uh, keep watching lots more videos on the way, but this is a responsive site with breakpoints and singularity. So as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tuts, and thanks for watching. Bye.